What is the meaning of life? That's the question we've been discussing for some months now here on this program at this time each day. And we've been trying to tackle it from a semi-intelligent viewpoint, trying to deal with the things that you and I regard as real, rather than with a lot of mythology and a lot of personal opinions. And what we said at the beginning was, you remember, that the meaning of life or the explanation of why you're here, I mean, why are you here? What is the point of your existence? What's the point of my existence? If we answer, well, the point of my existence is to stay alive, then you know that begs the question, well, why stay alive? And it's the same with the kind of answer, well, I stay alive so that I can get a good education. Why? So that I can get a good job. Why? So that I can have children. Why? So that they can get a good, etc., etc. Ad absurdum. The answers to the question, what is the meaning of life, so often drive us into vicious circles out of which we cannot escape. That's what we're trying to do in our conversations together at this time each day. What is the meaning of life? And what we have said is that the meaning of life depends a great deal on what you and I believe about the origin of life. For instance, if you believe that life has resulted just from the chance collision of atoms in space, or if you believe that life has come from a mindless, impersonal, élan vital, or a mindless, directionless, evolutionary process, then your answer to the question, what is the meaning of life, will be very different from your answer if you think that, though there may have been an evolutionary process, it is in fact filled with purpose and meaning and suggests that there is an intelligent mind somewhere at the back of the universe, then your answer to the question, what is the meaning of life, in that case, will be very different. For instance, if you and I think that the existence that we now experience has come about by sheer chance and has not been planned, then we're left with some very unpalatable facts. Fact one, there are five billion other people in the universe besides yourself or on the earth. And those five billion are scrambling around for whatever food and clothing is on this earth. And they're scrambling for as much of it as, of course, you're scrambling for. And that immediately introduces into your attitude to life some very compulsive reasons for existing. One of the main ones being to get enough food just to keep yourself alive, if only so that you can think a little more about why you're here. And so your life takes on a driving compulsion to get as much food and as much clothing and as much shelter as you can. And, of course, the other five billion are trying to do the same thing so that it brings a certain fear and apprehensiveness into your approach to life and into your approach to your daily work and into your school. It brings in a spirit of competition that is not nearly uh, as enjoyable as just living life for its own sake. It begins to be somewhat of a rat race. It's the same with your feeling about your self-worth and your identity. You begin to realize that there are five billion others who all think of themselves as unique as you think you your, yourself to be. And obviously they don't realize how unique you are. And so your life often takes on a kind of impulse to make yourself seem important in other people's eyes, or at least to bring yourself before each before other people's notice. And so again, there comes into your answer what is to the question, what is the meaning of life, some degree of compulsion. In other words, there's a sense in which you can't afford to sit back and take an academic reasoned approach to this question, because you are rather preoccupied 
with some of the needs that you have, the need for security, the need for some sense of value or self-worth or significance. And it's the same with actually your attitude to happiness because you begin to be doubtful about what the purpose of life is after it's over. And so you determine to yourself, well, I must get as much happiness here on this earth as I possibly can. And so you become a driven man or a driven woman. And in that case, your answer to what is the meaning of life is, well, the meaning of life is that I am a driven man. I'm a driven woman. I'm driven by needs of security and needs of significance and needs for happiness. And really, I can't academically or intellectually deal with that question, what is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is thrust upon me by the needs that I find I have. Whereas, of course, if you believe that there is enough evidence in the order of the seasons and in the order of the orbiting of the planets around the sun, and if you feel that there is enough indication of order and design when you study the DNA molecule or you look at the chart of the elements and see how miraculously it seems they fit into that chart as we discover each element, or if you feel like Einstein, that the order and design in the universe indicates that there was another mind that is greater than our minds that can discover that order and design, then you can take a much more relaxed attitude to the question. Because you begin to ask yourself now, if there is a mind behind this universe, then that mind must have had some purpose in creating me, because that mind has certainly obvious purpose in creating the smallest insect. The incredible balance of nature shows us that there is a purpose for everything in nature. And it is incredible the way there has come about a purpose for everything in our own bodies. So this intelligent mind behind the universe has certainly shown great economy in his design of things. And it's reasonable to believe that he has shown equal economy, if not more so, in creating us, because we seem to be at the very peak of creation. We seem to have, for instance, the only brain cells that are able to think about themselves. And so there are indications that we are certainly near the top, if not at the very top of the natural creation. And it is utterly reasonable to believe that this creator had a reason for making us. Then your task begins to be to find out the nature of this creator and this maker and find out if he knows about you being here and what he had in mind in putting you here. And of course your approach to the question what is the meaning of life becomes a great deal more balanced and can be, if you use your mind, a great deal more intelligent. That, of course, is the approach that we have taken. We have said that it is utterly unreasonable to believe that this whole thing came about by chance. Order and design cannot result from time plus chance. And there had to be a personal mind behind the universe. And you know how in the earlier programs we have discussed the reasons for believing that there is an orderly mind and then believing that that orderly mind was personal and then believing that that orderly mind had a son and that that son was the un unique man that lived in our, the first century of our era, that man Jesus of Nazareth. Now, I won't try to go over all that explanation. If you would like to uh, explain or talk about or discuss the reasons for believing that there is a creator, then please do send for the earlier tapes and catch up with us on that. But we have got to the point in our discussion where we believe that is very reasonable. And because of our discussion and our study of the documentary evidence and manuscripts that lie behind the history of the New Testament, we have come to the conclusion that that man Jesus of Nazareth is actually the son of the maker of the world and that he explained to us what the meaning of life is and what reality is. And that's really what we would like to discuss now for the next months and possibly the next years. 
So please do. If you have not reached that point in your own thinking, do write to the address that I give at the end of the program and we will send you those earlier tapes and you can catch up with the discussion. Now what I'd like to begin to do tomorrow is talk about the explanation of the meaning of life that this unique man, Jesus of Nazareth, gave us.